Paramount is releasing 10 Cloverfield Lane on Blu-ray this coming Tuesday. I have the advanced review copy here, which indicates the slipcover, which manages to get the actors on the front, which I'm sure was probably vital for them before they put it out in, in the stores for anybody that wasn't familiar with what it was. Of course, this is like a half slip of sorts. It goes up to here, and then you've got this back here that goes all the way up, and then, of course, you can remove that to find the um, your basic cover, which was like the theatrical art for it. And, of course, it's a combo pack, Blu-ray, DVD, with a digital code as well. But this was something I was really looking forward to for, for weeks and weeks. Um, I've been waiting for this release to come out. And I really got excited about the movie. You know, I, I had no idea they were making like a semi-sequel to Cloverfield. Uh, and I really loved the original Cloverfield, and I spent all my time back in the day trying to find all the information I could find online regarding, you know, Cloverfield. And I was there on opening night in theaters to see that. Wasn't there on opening night to see this, but I like to wait for home video nowadays anyway. But, of course, this was, you know, kind of a surprise announcement that it was going to be a blood relative, whatever that's supposed to mean to the original Cloverfield. So, basically, if you've not seen it, it stars uh, John Goodman and what I believe was was it Mary Elizabeth something isn't that her name like I mean I should probably remember because she was in the thing she was in Final Destination three I want to say the one with the the fair rack and she's in like a number of stuff I think even the remake of Black Christmas but that one was kind of forgettable but nonetheless we follow her at the beginning of the movie and she's in an accident so she wakes up and she's chained to a wall or something of the sorts and she's in like his cellar which of course turned out to be a survival room and he's informing her that humanity as they know it is now gone so she's just going to have to accept the fact that they're there for the time being because something happened and and there's really there's nobody left and the air is polluted there's another guy down there with them which sets forth like a three character arc you know as her character development goes on and as things progress we really try to figure out if he is in fact telling the truth if he's lying if he's semi-lying what exactly is going on uh, up above ground and we get hints here and there which kind of backs his story up but then there's some things that happens that kind of makes you wonder uh, what exactly is going on I loved it for the most part now I say the most part there's two issues I have with this movie I do not want to spoil nothing, so I'm going to go and tiptoe around it a little bit. But this movie had a perfect opening to, to tie right into Cloverfield. And then you couldn't do the whole blood relative thing. You could kind of make it like a d distinct sequel, but a sequel nonetheless, uh, in more ways than, than, than what it does do, in a more solid way, actually. If you, if you have seen the movie, maybe you know there's something that's happened. He says there's something bad that's happened, so they have to stay underground. The air is polluted. That could have tied in really well to the original if they had thought about it, or maybe they just didn't want to do it, I guess. But I have a little bit of issue with that and the connection to Cloverfield in general. Um, second thing I have an issue with, I love the movie till the end of it. You know, eventually you have to get out of the cellar, and I think once, once that happens, like the follow-up, maybe oversteps the boundaries a little bit to, to what... I would call was still within range of being solid. Just a slight overstep, but an overstep nonetheless. I think more subtle would have helped this one in the long run. But still, I don't want to make it sound like I did not love the film, because I really did like the I, I loved the film, pretty much. I, I loved it a lot. And everything into the final act is pretty solid stuff, pretty interesting stuff. It keeps you guessing. And there's some pretty big surprises here and there. There's some scenes that just catch you off guard. They're real subtle. They happen before you know it. And, and you're just left sitting there like, what is going on here? And did I just see that? So it, it's a, one of the best I'd say of the year. Definitely going to be on a top ten list of mine, I do believe. This, of course, comes with the Blu-ray. And the special features on the Blu-ray is a commentary by director Dan Trangenberg and producer J.J. Abrams. Cloverfield 2, Bunker Mentality, Duck and Cover, Spinoff, Kelvin Optical, Fine Tuned, and End of Story. That's like your featurettes here, which they're cool. I maybe expect a little bit more maybe on the extras, but you know, it is what it is. And if it's like Cloverfield, there'll probably be a special feature or steel book or something. Which, well, there is a steel book already. I think there's the Best Buy exclusive, but there'll probably be a special edition later on, some more stuff to it, because Cloverfield, I think, did that later on. But as is minor misstep maybe in the final act uh notwithstanding this is solid this is really good and i know i like don't use the term solid a lot but 
if I ever said it and it was true, it applies to this because this one here is a winner in my book. I love the acting. I love the plot overall. And, you know, I liked it in general. It's just the last part of it maybe got a little bit too kooky for my book. But then again, we're kind of halfway following a story about a giant monster that attacked New York. So what, what can you do, right? But still, I did like it.